Hey everyone. Hello from the UK and from Germany. Well, awesome. And Canada. All right. So for everybody else in all those really strange time zones, we're going to start doing, um, we're just playing with times. So the next webinar that we do will actually be uh, 10 o'clock in the morning here in Denver time, Mountain Standard Time. So hopefully we can, you know, create some time and space where everybody can attend who wants to in the live. So I guess it is time to start. Well, welcome everybody. Today we will be working with the golden fire and light rods, the dowsing rods. Um, a lot of what we do with the dowsing rods is the energetics. And so um, for a lot of the energetic work that we do with the dowsing rods, I would sure suggest tr checking out the webinar on the golden fire and light wands. That was that first webinar that we did, and you can find on that product page at twistedsage.com, the golden fire and light wands, because that will walk you through the processes that we do with the dowsing rods, because they're basically one and the same energetics. Uh, but the dowsing rods will go through everything today with that and take some questions uh, with those and would also love to hear some experiences that people have with them. Um, so I guess I could start with the, the creation story of these dowsing rods. Um, our, our good friend Shell Darling um, at Golden Light Dowsing asked me about creating a set of dowsing rods for her. And for me, uh, through dowsing, I'd always seen using dowsing rods, because I used to teach dowsing, um, just, and as a self-taught dowser myself, of using the dowsing rods to find your yes or no answers, um, to then be able to use them to find everything from energy fields uh, for a person, for a tree, for a bottle of water, to also using the dowsing rods to, to find energy lines. And that's really why I started working with the dowsing rods is because I was just drawn to um, the, the energetic grid lines of the earth and to learn more about those. So when, um, through all the work that we've done working with the different grid lines and the geomagnetics and portal vortexes, which are just a part of an intersection of geomagnetic lines that create vortexes where you find portals. And so working with all these different earth geomagnetics, um, when Shell Darling asked us to create this set of dowsing rods, I wanted something more than just dowsing rods. I wanted something that was obviously energetic in creation first that we could utilize, that anybody could utilize to do the work that we were doing through consciousness, which is moving geomagnetic lines, clearing portal vortexes, um, crossing over waywards ghosts, creating sacred space, all that stuff we wanted to be able to create to put into these dowsing rods. So when my sister Brenda and I looked into um, creating the etheric template for these dowsing rods, when we were looking at it, we Brenda first saw this golden fiery light um, wand, and that was the golden fire and light rod. And so that is what we originally anchored into um, when we first brought that in. Before we made the wands, we anchored that into the, these dowsing rods, and we did that through the standard Teotihuacan unit. That sacred measure there, it works as a straight line frequency as well as a tensor ring qubit. And so when we anchored that into that specific qubit measure, um, really interesting because usually we create all of our etheric tools, Brenda and I, but this one we've, we're seeing that it is older than the galaxy, probably older than the universe. It is something that is so powerful that the human and from the human perspective cannot actually wield this etheric energetic tool. We are simply the physical anchor as are these tools. So we're the physical anchor for our soul. These tools are the physical anchor for that higher dimensional tool. And it's our soul who is wielding that. So we're sitting here holding this. Our soul is sitting there holding the golden fire and light rod. So, that's uh, that's kind of the basics of how we began to create these. Um, and then 
after we played with the Golden Fire and Light for some time for a year or so, and then after we had the Sacred Heart activated to where we were working with the Golden Fire instead of just the Golden Light. I'm sorry, we played with the Golden Light Rod for a year or so. Then once we activated the Sacred Heart, the Golden Fire, then it became the Golden Fire and Light. It's just bringing another level and layer to this already phenomenal tool. So let's see. These are the wooden cases that we have some local gentlemen make for us. We sell these, they're kind of large and bulky, but for carrying your dowsing rods cross country, um, highly recommend it. The dowsing rods can be easily bent, especially if you're carrying them in your back pocket, you forget about it and you sit on them. <laughs> so having, having a, some kind of a carrying case is fantastic. Um, people have used things like drumstick carrying cases because these are 14 inches long approximately and they'll fit within those cases. So you might notice that when you got your dowsing rod, whether you did a single or a pair, and that's the thing too, is that I like to, you know, put forth the idea of using a single rod versus a pair because I believe you can do everything with the single as you do with the pair. And then that way you're not spending that twice amount, the amount of money to purchase these things. Um, these guys there, and again, everything that we make is cut to that hundred thousandths of a millimeter in length. This is the standard TO2 Econ unit. Um, the handles the golden fire. It's on a, there's a double sheath in here and it's on those sealed ball bearings. So you might notice when you pick up your wand or your dowsing rod first, it might sit there and just do some really crazy spinning things. So what that's doing when it is spinning and doing its thing, it is doing the aligning, the balancing, the clearing, the bringing you into the heart space, because that's what all the tools are about and doing, is they're holding that field for you to move your consciousness from here back into the heart. So when you're holding these tools, it's as simple as just taking a single breath, breathing in that energy from both earth and sky simultaneously into the heart, mixing that with you, sending it straight back out. So you are a column of light from the heart. Your consciousness is in the heart. So when you do that, then the work takes so much easier. So a lot of people, when they pick up the dowsing rod, it'll sit there and spin until it pulls them into the heart space. Um, so once your dowsing rod starts stop spinning, then you can actually use it as a dowsing tool. And that's something that we don't necessarily teach is basics of dowsing and how to douse because these are higher end dowsing tools. So most dowsers, and so now I never realized this either being a self-taught dowser, that when I was dowsing and I was finding energy fields and geomagnetic lines and getting questions and answers through the dowsing rods, I thought that's all there was to it until I found, um, you know, the American Society of Dowsers. And I've actually spoken there a few times. And um, then I really found out that everybody uses dowsing for much more than just questions, answers, and finding fields. They're actually using them to clear energy. And so with, um, and so it was great that we have a dowsing tool that does that. So with professional dowsers who would go into a home and they'll use the dowsing rods to find, let's say, the source of the source of a negative energy, such as a portal vortex or maybe the household electrical box, something of that nature. They're looking for something that is causing issues within the home. And it's really fun to work with professional dowsers who go out into the field and do this because I'll, I'll ask them to go in use the dowsing rods just as dowsing rods to find these fields and everything, then go back out to their car or wherever they're at, go into the heart space, use this like you would the golden fire and light wand. You go through and you do the columns of light, you do the environmental clearing, um, because that was a whole hour long video that we have on how to do that consciousness work with these tools. And then the dowser goes back in, checks the space again, and lo and behold, portal vortex is closed, everything else is cleared, 
and it just makes the work that simple and easy. Um, so, and, and please do um, anytime you guys can start asking questions too, but I'll walk you through really quick on some of the basics of the dowsing, even though it's something that we usually don't teach with these guys. I know that <clears throat> there's been a lot of people who have purchased these who are not necessarily, um, you know, fluent in dowsing. So dowsing requires being in the sacred space of the heart. So you're not being influenced from up here. So again, you have the rod, you take the breath, you go into the heart, and then you can do things like, if you have a single rod, you can say, show me a yes. And for me, yeah, the yes is usually a straightforward. So it's off just a little bit to that angle to the right for me. Show me a no. Okay, so it's now, so a no for me is off to that angle to the left. So now you can start asking the yes or no questions, which is a really fun thing to do to empower your own self is to start asking simple, easy questions. Nothing like, um, does my boyfriend or girlfriend like me or, you know, things that are emotional stuff. You don't want to start asking emotional questions. You want the simple, easy stuff that you do not have a tie to what the answer is. So a fun one is to get a deck of cards and go red and black. Is the next card red? Is the next card black? And then just see what your answers are. And then you can become fluent in getting your yes or no answers. Sometimes it can be frustrating because you may not get the right answers. Double check that you're in the heart space. Take the breath again. Or take the three breaths. Go into the heart space again. Then start asking those questions. So the yes or no questions is one thing that you can do with the rod. And if you're using two rods, you know, then you can establish, give me a yes. That's using my yes. Give me a no. And for me, usually it's the rods go straight apart from each other. So you establish that, give me a yes, give me a no, whether you have two rods or a single rod. So once you, so that's all the yes and no stuff. Now then, we also have um, the other things that you can do with the rod, such as finding a field. Like, let's say, here's another fun experiment to do, is take a bottle of water. I brought an Aquafina bottle. Sit that guy out on your kitchen table. Then with your intention, because when you're using dowsing tools and you are looking for the answers, you have that intention just right here of finding something. Intend to find the energetic field of that bottle of water. Then walk up to it and tell the dowsing rod moves. And when the dowsing rod moves, that's where you found that field. So then go through the consciousness work of anchoring a column of light into that bottle. And since that column of light is there, we're having the intention of finding the energy field of the water again. We're not looking for the energy field of the column of light. We're going to look for that energy field of the water after we've anchored a column of light into it. Then you might need to step back a little bit farther and start walking slowly towards that bottle, asking where that energy field is, and then you'll find it. So that's another application that you can do as you are playing and learning with using these dowsing tools. So let's see. And then also they'll produce a frequency all on their own. Um, it's the golden fire, the golden light. To us, we usually see like this caterpillar, just kind of a small energy field that comes off of this. When you're holding it and using it with intention, kind of like the wands, that you can use it just like the wands. And just with the intention of sending out energy, it's sitting here just shooting out. To me, it presents as like these little fuzzy balls of energy, um, kind of like blue, blue and gold. 
And when they go out and they stick to something that I'm running energy at, so let's say I'm just going to run energy to that bottle of Aquafina water. I can just sit here and run energy to that, and it is just covering it with those little balls of energy. And then that's raising the frequency and vibration of the water. So just like the wands, which I highly recommend you checking out that, um, that wand webinar, that will give you a lot of the energetic uses that you would use this golden fire and light rod for. Um, so the other, the other things for dowsing, you know, the yes and no is a great, great process, especially when you begin to trust that yes or no. Um, you can, there's all kinds of uses. I mean, we have people that could, that will go out to a park and they'll just ask for, you know, finding those different energy lines or else it's kind of like a spiritual scavenger hunt too. You can be like, okay, where should I go today? You can do this in your car and just follow your dowsing rod. You get to an intersection out in the country, which way should I go? You know, so I mean, the there's just so many things that you can do with dowsing because we see dowsing as basically you are connecting to that that higher mind to source, to creation, to soul. And that was one of the things that we always asked was where do we receive that from? And this is simply a tool of our own knowing, especially these tools where they're connecting us more to that higher self, connecting us into the heart space where we have a clean and clear connection and channel with our higher self. So that's where all this stuff comes from. And so this is a phenomenal training wheel, if you will, to get us started. So I don't even use the dowsing rods anymore. For me, it's more, you know, just comes in the form of a knowing. Um, it, when you're asking your questions, you just have that feeling because there's many other ways to douse too in body dowsing. So like if, um, if I'm looking for a certain uh, product to ingest, I will hold it to my sternum and then I'll either lean forward or back. And that helps me find how to, um, that, that's my dowsing. It's just a body dowsing. But anyway, I just want to check and see here. Questions. Nobody has any questions yet. So um, let's see. That is about all I really have on the dowsing rods. Um, we also have another video, I believe it was either one or two years ago at the American Society of Dowsing, we did like a, gosh, it was like a three or four hour class. I think it was like three hours. And that one is actually on YouTube as well on our twistedstage.com YouTube channel. So, I mean, it's kind of a long chatty class. But I mean, and this is very much the condensed, quick, easy version. But you're, you can still find more information there on the twistedsage.com um, website as well. So anyway, all right. Well, I think we're going to end this webinar then. Um, what about hanging the shaman's wand on the end of the rod? So you can use any other tools with this because this will synergize and harmonize with so much there's actually people who will tie a crystal onto the end um, we used to actually put these a long time ago when we first made them we had little hooks kind of like what are on the regular wands and a lot of people used to put little fun things on the bottom we since stopped making the hooks on them but um, however you adorn the dowsing rods is absolutely perfect just um, making sure that they can still freely spin. So anyway, and of course, with all the tools that we create, they never need cleaned or cleared. As soon as you pick it up and it's your intention that this is that golden fire and light rod and it's doing its thing, it automatically cleans and clears. So, um, oh, wonderful. Somebody to share their experience with the rod. A friend of mine had done some testing on me and found that I had a lot of electromagnetic stress on my body as well as aquifers under the house. 
I worked with the rod around the house and I've been wearing the pendant and all the stress has gone from my body. Beautiful. So, you know, all the pendants that we create will help with clearing that, um, you know, just the electromagnetic stressors from the air. But as far as like the, the waterways, the geomagnetic lines, that's one of the things that the dowsing rods are doing with that intent and the golden fire and light wands is that they are, um, they're not only just clearing the general vicinity of any non-beneficial geopathic, geomagnetic, um, geopathic would be in underground streams, cracks, fissures, um, even power lines, water lines, sewer lines, all of that can cause geopathic stressors. So when you are doing the work with clearing that space, and again, on that golden fire and light wand video, it'll walk you through creating this bubble of space around your space and it's cleaning and clearing it. It is working with those geopathic and geomagnetic lines that'll either move them around the space that's in the highest and best, or else it'll clear them back to their source. So like, let's say you are downstream of a geomagnetic line that goes through like a nuclear power plant and it's carrying all that crap or else maybe it's coming through a really funky part of a neighborhood and it's carrying all that energy and information, thought forms, all the stuff with it that uses that as a carrier wave. Um, when you create that bubble of light and you're using this wand, or even if you're just spinning the wand with the intention of clearing all geomagnetic lines that come through that space, it goes back upstream and clears it at its source. So for like the, um, the, the, uh, the aquifers under the home, this, this technology and our consciousness can move those aquifers. We can create that bubble of space around to where they go around. And anything that we do from that space here, from working within the heart, working as a soul, that is the one who's actually wielding the power and potency of this tool, everything is done in the highest and best. So you don't have to worry that, oh, I'm moving this geomagnetic line around my place and it's affecting the neighbors, things like that. Everything is always done in the highest and best. And also with these geomagnetic lines is also where you find a lot of uh, where ghosts, waywards will travel these lines because they need a ghost needs an energy from a place or a person to survive. And so that will move those around a home too. So you don't have those travelers that are always going through your home. If that happens to be a situation, um, would cotton be a good to stop? Um, so if you're going to affix anything to the wand it can be any kind of material it can be metal cotton leather glues doesn't matter nothing will affect the energetics of these um, so let's see um, you can then clear something miles away just be the intent then yes yeah, so when you're using this and you're using this with the intent of clearing something well it can clear up and down the geomagnetic lines um, just with the intention of clearing your space that happens automatically that it will go out and clear those as far as doing distance work yes you can totally do the distance work with this tool again do refer to that golden fire and light wand video and that'll talk about doing distance work as well um, let's see and daniela since working with a set of your tools since april not only did the electromagnetic and geopathic stress clear but it seems to have cleared out a lot of emotional baggage as well. Some situations and emotions that used to be very persistent, I cannot feel or connect with anymore. Yeah, that's the golden fire and light um, rod, that a third tool. That thing clears timelines and realities. The golden fire will clear the emotional body. Um, flipping powerful, powerful tools. And again, it's doing that consciousness work that is the most potent and powerful with all this stuff. I mean, you can use this uh, this um, dowsing rod and it's gonna do a lot of that great work. So again, every time you pick it up and this thing just starts spinning, you know it's doing the work. And so even if you don't do anything but grab your dowsing rod and hold it, let it spin, and then let it come to rest, 
it's doing things automatically without you having to witness see all that so anyway well my friends oh one more question uh, stone circle quite close where people often do things that do not serve the highest good so yeah anytime where so if you're doing work on different places basically you're always going into that sacred space of the heart before you do the work because when we use any of the tools that we create at twisted sage studios um any of this is on a soul to soul level so we're not violating the free will of anybody we're not having to go in and ask permissions for clearing spaces like let's say a stone circle what we do is we go into the heart space again and just do that work that you would like with the wand of either standing there and creating that bubble around you or else you're anchoring a column of light into that space because when we do that higher level work, it is the soul and it's the soul's perspective of what is in that highest and best. So maybe from here, anything that's kind of funky, maybe it's the highest and best because some people may still need that as part of their path. But from the soul, um, it can make those, it has those perspectives and it will ensure that what is done is in the highest and best. Um, question, going to do a webinar on the elementals. Yes, um, we're going to do webinars on the elementals at some point in time. We just scheduled the next um, webinar for the dragon wand. And so uh, here, August 2nd, tomorrow, the dragon wands will have a sale on those. Um, and then August 11th at 10 a.m. Denver time, my time, on a Sunday, we're going to be doing the webinar with the Dragon Wands. That's going to be a lot of fun. And then the webinar after that, we're scheduling in the Water Rings. So certainly at some point, we'll hit the Earth Elementals. We'll probably try to get Brenda in here since Brenda's the one that actually channeled in those Earth Elementals. So um, yeah, we plan on doing a webinar on each and every one of the tools. And you are welcome to send in your questions at any time too. If you're not able to make these webinars, if it's three o'clock in the morning, your time, and you don't want to make it here, just send your questions and I'll be sure that we address those on the webinar. And um, yeah, wonderful. Um, so let's see, Daniela had a question on a webinar that we did. Um, yeah, and if we did any webinars that were related to any third party stuff, um, totally get with the third parties. They're the ones who have any of those webinars on hand. Um, and then Jim, Jim's got something here too. Um, ask him to install energy and to enhance something, spin it clockwise, and then you can do counterclockwise to remove. And, you know, and, and that really is a way that we used to do a lot of that work is that we would use the vortexes and we would spend something clockwise to send the energy counterclockwise to pull energy. With these tools, we are stepping beyond sending pulling. We're doing it at the same time and transmuting. So we are creating when we create those columns of light they are counter rotating vortexes. They're going left, right, in, out, everywhere. Um, so you can still use these tools with intention to create those different spins. You can certainly do that, but really we're trying to make things simple, simple, simple. Um, the more we can stay out of our mind when we're using these tools, the bigger, that magic and miracle field is that we can connect in with. Um, truly phenomenal stuff. All right, guys. I'll see you next time. Thank you for being here.